Want photos that are tack sharp from front to back? Well, that's as easy as manly removing a corn syrup based, artificially flavored confectionery product from the infantile grasp of newly born Homo sapiens. Greetings humans, Josh Cripps here with Professional Photography Tips, showing you how you can nail the focus and depth of field in your landscape photos to get sharp focus from front to back. To get sufficient depth of field back in the old film days, you had to rely on an in-depth understanding of apertures, hyperfocal distances, and focal lengths. Then, once you dialed in your composition and settings, you'd squint through the viewfinder, hold down the depth of field preview button, and hit go. Now this is still a totally acceptable way to get good depth of field in your photos, and paired with enough experience, this technical approach can yield wonderful results. But with the advent of digital cameras, we have a new tool that makes getting good depth of field and focus even easier and much less technical, and that's Live View. Here's how it works. Set up your composition, and as a starting point, dial in f8. For many lenses, f8 is the sharpest aperture, so if we can shoot there, it's a good deal. Focus about a third of the way up from the bottom of the frame, then make sure you're in manual focus. Now enter Live View. With some cameras, particularly Nikons, going into Live View will automatically stop the aperture and your lens down to the aperture you set. But with many other cameras, you'll have to hold the depth of field preview button to get the lens to stop down. In either case, that's what you want because the Live View feed is now showing you the exact focus and depth of field you currently have dialed in. Let's zoom in on the immediate foreground. If that's sharp, then zoom in on the background. If that's sharp too, then congratulations, you've nailed the focus and depth of field for your shot. But if either your foreground or your background is soft, it means we need to make some adjustments to our aperture or our focus point. Let's start with the focus. If your foreground is soft, manually pull your focus closer until your foreground is in sharp focus. Now check your background. If that's still sharp, you win. But if your background is now soft, it means we need to increase our depth of field by stopping down a bit. Try f11 or f16. Once you've dialed in those new aperture settings, you most likely have to exit and re-enter Live View or release and repress a depth of field preview button in order to see the new aperture settings take effect. Similarly, if it was your background that was soft originally, push your focus further away until your background is sharp. Now check your foreground. If it's still sharp, then you're done. But if your foreground is soft, you'll need to stop down. Just keep repeating this process until your foreground and background are sharp, and then you'll have nailed the focus and depth of field for your shot. Now be aware that the more you stop down, the softer the details of your photo will become. Not because of focus, but because of something called diffraction. Compare these details shot at f8 versus these shot at f22. So you may reach a point of diminishing returns where your photo just doesn't get any sharper. And in some situations, you might also reach the physical limits of your lens. You've stopped all the way down, and either your foreground or your background is still out of focus. So what do you do? Well, in this case, you've got four good options. Get farther away from your foreground subject. Relatively speaking, this puts your foreground and background closer together, making your required depth of field smaller. Zoom out or use a wider lens. The wider you get, the more forgiving depth of field and focus becomes. In other words, it's way easier to get an entire scene in focus using a 14mm lens than a 50mm lens. Focus Stat. Set your lens to its sharpest aperture and take multiple shots for your scene, adjusting the focus each time so that you have a sharp image for every part of the scene, from the foreground, going through the midground, and onto the background. You can then auto-align and auto-blend these shots in Photoshop to get a completely sharp master image. Don't worry if you don't know how to do this, I'll be doing another video on focus stacking down the road. Think more abstractly. If you can't get everything in your photo in focus using a deep depth of field, try the complete opposite. Use a shallow depth of field to enhance just one part of the scene. As always, thanks for watching. Next time we'll be looking at how to get that amazing silky look when photographing waterfalls, so be sure to subscribe. You can always check out my website, joshuacrips.com, for landscape photography, tutorials, workshops, and more. Until next time, guys, have fun and happy shooting. Now be aware that the more you stop down, get farther away from your
foreground subject. This puts your foreground and background relatively speak. Go away for that plane. Go away. Come on, wait. You can also check out my website, joshuacrips.com, for landscape tutorials. <laughs> Damn it, I was on a good run, too. It's recording, though. Should I stop it? <laughs>